When I went to school, school is actually, I would say it was quite nice to be honest. I enjoyed it at the early stages, but later on it went, I didn't really like it as much. I think from a young age, I've always liked football. I enjoyed football, I've supported Liverpool since I, was, since I first came to the country really. Since then, and even now to this day, I'm a big Liverpool supporter. From a young age, I was getting into fights and stuff like that, and I never really had anyone that I thought that I could rely on. So, especially from my school anyway, so I started associating with older people from my own culture as well. And around them, obviously, all of my family, they're absolutely beautiful people, every single one of them. It's like, because there's so many of us, it was hard to concentrate on just me, and I felt, I felt bored at times, and I felt like I needed something. So that's how I ended up hanging out with guys that were a lot older than me. I know, obviously, they were into doing wrong things and stuff like that. I think the ultimate dream for me would have been playing for the club that I love, which is Liverpool, obviously. At the moment, I'm in prison. I've done four years in jail and I've got another 15 years to go. I will be, I'd say, I think 35 when I'm eligible for parole, but that does not necessarily guarantee that I will get out. So that's just the first chance for me to get out, but it won't mean that I will get out. I went out with a knife, but not trying to attack people. I just went out there feeling that I need to protect myself. And obviously one thing leads to another and you never ever think you're gonna kill someone, but obviously doing that could actually mean you end up killing someone. When you actually think about it, you don't need that knife. A lot, a lot of the times I used to think I'm protecting myself, but what am I protecting myself from? That night, if I never took a life, it would have been a fist fight at most. And I would have got what? A bruised eye or a bruised, he would have got a bruised eye or a bruised face. There's nothing, obviously it's, it's not nice having a fight, but it's better than ending up in jail with a life sentence or killing somebody. And a pair, you know what it's not just, it's not even just about me, it's about the person that lost his life as well. What about his family? The person that died, that was his mom's only child. And that child is not there anymore. He's gone, the mom doesn't have a child anymore. So obviously it's about them as well. And it's not nice because having to live with the feeling that I've taken a life, trust me, it's not nice, especially when you're in your cell, on your own, all night, and you got nothing else to do. You're gonna be thinking about these things and they come to haunt you. The knife is literally from, from the kitchen. I just picked you up from the kitchen drawer and took you out with me. So basically there I was walking literally to the shop, two blocks in front of me, nothing's different, everything's the same. And then we see each other get into a fight. 30 seconds later, my whole life is different. Everything about my life is different. And it weren't, yeah, everything was different, everything changed. That moment changed my whole life for the worse. Obviously after it happened, I was, I was in a state of shock really. I didn't know what to do. I was thinking, what have I done? And I, I was a bit lost. I didn't want to turn to my family because I thought, what would they say? And at the same time, I didn't want to go to jail. So obviously, I was literally lost. And there, there I was, I was 15 years old, literally in Europe on my own with nobody around me and nobody to help me and I didn't know nobody in France, so I had to travel to, to Belgium to meet with someone. And um, it was obviously because I didn't speak that language as well. It was very difficult and I, f I felt scared if I'm honest. I didn't know what I was doing, but somehow I ended up getting there. I was banged up basically for 23 hours a day. I was out for one hour a day. And sometimes when I get into trouble, I would have no TV and I'd be banged up for 23 hours a day with no TV, just looking at the ceilings, literally. There's nothing to do. You're basically stuck in a place where you can't go nowhere and you can't do nothing. 
I've been in jail four years, and since I've been in jail, I've had a little sister, I've had um, a niece and a nephew, and it's so crazy because I've still, it's been, although it's been quite a while since they were born, I've only seen my, my baby sister probably three or four times, literally, and I don't, she probably doesn't know who I am. It's sad really because they're gonna grow up probably not knowing me, although they're gonna come see me and that. It's not, it's not the same as growing up with someone. And even when they do come see me, it's gonna be like, what, once every two months, once every three months. As a kid, I've always prioritized my friends over my family. So if, if my friends told me to do something, I'd go with them. And then if my parents told me not to do it, I wouldn't listen to them thinking, you know what, I know better than them. And it's so crazy because I've been in jail and I've had a lot of time to think. I've realized that it's actually the friends that are dragging you in the wrong direction. We always think that oh, our parents are wrong, they're telling us this, they're telling us that. Why are they telling us this? We know better than them. But it's actually the opposite. They're older, they know, they know life and we don't. And a lot of the times we, we make the mistake of thinking we know better than them. I used to do things for my friends and prioritize them over my family and that. And now, since I've been in jail, I've realized that your friends, they're not always gonna be there for you. It's always your family who will love you. Ask me how many friends come to see me. None. I tell you that, and you know, the funniest thing is, yeah, a lot of them actually say to other people that they come see me, but they actually don't. They're only saying that to like show off later, yeah, I go see me in jail, this is that. They don't come to see me. The only people that come to see me is my family. If I could actually go back, I'd be a different person. I'd be that nerd in the class that people like me used to bully. I'd actually be that person because that person is probably somebody now, he's probably got a job, he's probably keeping his parents happy. What can I do from jail? I can't, I can't have a job, I can't make my family happy, I can't make my siblings happy. There's nothing I could do because I'm in jail. So if I could go back, I'd actually, I'd actually be a good person. I'd stick to my education, do what my parents tell me to do. A man once told me, he said, oh, I said, damn, what are you doing with your life, this, this, that. And I used to think, who's this clown telling me how to live my life? I know better than you. But now obviously being in jail and having a lot of time to think, I'm thinking, you know what, I was actually the clown, not him. It's so crazy because I'm, I'm talking to you now and you're probably thinking, who's this clown telling me how to live my life? Trust me, I was the same person that you were and now look who's the clown. I didn't take a knife out that night to use it, but I did and now I'm in jail for life. I've done it, it's hard and I don't want you to do it. I wouldn't want no one to go through what I'm going through. That is why, that's the only reason I'm telling you not to, not to carry a knife. It is not beneficial for me. Honestly, it's not gonna make a difference for me whether you go kill somebody or if you carry a knife or if you don't. But because of what I'm going through, I don't want nobody else to go through it. And sometimes it's, it's, it's hard for people to understand that because they don't really know nobody that's going through it. Because I'm going through it, I don't want you to go through it. That's the only reason I'm telling you not to carry a knife.